Black. I'm the MPP for Elgin, Middlesex, London, and welcome to my riding. Um, this is the London part of Elgin, Middlesex, London. We're very happy so many could be here. Uh, we've got some great news today for all. Uh, let me begin by saying um, I'm gl so glad that Mayor Morgan is here. Where is Josh? Um, he's doing a great job as our mayor, and, and I was with him on the weekend. He hosted the Briar, the Canadian Curling Championships, and I think by all uh, um, results, we could say it was a resounding success, not only for London, but the community and areas around. So well done, Mayor. Thank you. We also have our warden from Middlesex County, Kathy Burkhart Jensen. Where are you, Kathy? Good to see you. Thank you for being here again. It's been a big week in our area here. Um, I would say we've had some game-changing announcements. How do we say DOS Auto? Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful news earlier in the week, but I will say we've got equally good news here today. Um, so with that, I'm going to call on a great colleague of mine, Deepak Anand, who is uh, the MPP for Mississauga Malton. Uh, a great leader in our legislature and parliamentary assistant to Minister McNaughton. So thank you again for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Deepak Anand. Thank you so much, uh, MPP Flack, uh, and thank you for hosting all of us. Really appreciate it. And thank you to each one of us, of you, to come here. Uh, I'm pleased to be here with Minister Monty McNaughton, uh, local champions from our caucus, the members of local government and members of Leona 1059. I, I still remember when I joined Minister McNaughton at the ministry, I remember talking about supporting our truck drivers. I shared the issues which I received from the stakeholders Tinder Singh and Shahid Mughal about their concerns. And thanks to Minister for listening to our stakeholders and taking bold required steps. Together, we introduced our first Working for Workers Act, which provided many protections for workers, including Ontarian everyday heroes, the truckers who kept our shelves stacked and our lights on. We ensured the truckers who are keeping our economy float one shipment at a time had the right to use washroom while on the road, and today we are building on that momentum. I am proud to be working alongside Minister McNaughton and our partners in both labor and management. I know the work that our government is doing, having a real impact on the workers of our province. We are leading the way and continuing every day to make good on our mission to work for our workers. Mr. McNaughton, as I know, you have been hard at work to deliver for the workers of this province, so without further ado, I'd like to invite Minister McNaughton, the champion for our workers, for the announcement today. Thank you so much. Well, thank you uh, very much, Deepak, for that a very kind introduction. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with so many people, uh, the men and women who are building the province of Ontario. Thank you for all the work that you do, and, and thanks for joining us today. I want to thank Brandon and his team here at Local 1059 of Lyona. They've been such great partners uh, for our government and, and for me personally to build uh, a stronger um, province and a stronger region for uh, the workers here uh, in Ontario. And uh, it's great to be with my colleagues here today. Minister Williams, who's going to speak momentarily, uh, MPP Flack, uh, who's doing a, a great job representing Elgin, Middlesex, London at Queen's Park. And of course, uh, one of my great friends, uh, the MPP for Sarnia Lambton, uh, Bob Bailey, who's such a champion for those in the skilled trades uh, back in Sarnia Lambton. I also want to uh, recognize, like uh, Rob did, our local uh, mayors, um, Josh Morgan and Kathy Burkhart Jessen, uh, for their uh, leadership. As Rob said, it really has been a great week for southwestern Ontario with the new uh, Volkswagen announcement about a new plant to be built here in our region. Thousands of jobs are coming here, uh, many in manufacturing, uh, building the new plant, and of course, uh, those in the skilled trades building uh, the technology of the future. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, manufacturing is roaring back in Ontario. Across Ontario today, there are more than 600,000 people working in construction. Every one of these men and women are heroes. Plumbers, electricians, boilermakers, iron workers, 
laborers, carpenters, welders, crane operators, the list goes on and on. These people do it all. They get up early every day, put on their gear, and travel to job sites to build the homes, factories, hospitals, and all the projects our families depend on. The conditions these workers face are rough and tough, and for far too long, they've been forgotten. They work outdoors, often far away from many things that we take for granted in our workplaces, including clean and safe washrooms. One of the biggest injustices I've seen on construction sites for a long time is the condition of washrooms. That is why last month I launched the first inspection, inspection blitz targeting dirty washrooms in Ontario's history. Since then, our Ministry of Labour Health and Safety inspectors have visited more than 1,800 job sites and found over 244 violations. The common issues they found were no toilets provided at all, lack of privacy and lack of cleaning. The worst cases included job sites where portable washrooms had missing doors, missing walls, and no place to wash your hands. For far too long, dirty washrooms have been considered acceptable. This ends now. Everyone deserves safe, clean, and private washrooms. That is why we're taking unprecedented action to improve washrooms with the toughest, toughest standards in North America. Our new legislation would require washrooms to be private and completely enclosed, adequately lit, and have hand sanitizer where running water is not possible. Our construction workers are heroes, and they deserve the basic dignity of access to a clean and safe washroom. Furthermore, we're doubling the number of washrooms on job sites and requiring sites to have at least one women's only washroom. All too often, I hear from women that this is one of the reasons they don't want to work in the skilled trades. Nobody should have to leave their workplace and search for a washroom. To attract more women to the skilled trades, we need to do better, and we will. In addition to improving washrooms, we're also ensuring women in construction have proper fitting gear. Everyone should have uniforms, boots, and safety harnesses that properly fit. The days of pink it and shrink it are over. <laughs> Women belong on our job sites, and they should see themselves reflected in the equipment and clothing available to them. This isn't just about safety. It's about sending the message that these jobs are open to both women and men. We need all hands on deck to build our future, and that means attracting more women to the skilled trades. Working together with our incredible labour leaders, many of them are here today, and with employers, we're building an Ontario that leaves nobody behind. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, we're working for our workers and working for you. Thank you very much, and now I'm really excited to announce and to invite up uh, to the podium Minister Williams, the Associate Minister of Women's Social and Economic Opportunity, who's uh, really passionate about getting more women into the skilled trades. And I have to say, there's a lot of success happening on this front. Uh, year over year, we've had an increase of 28 percent in female apprenticeship registrations in the province of Ontario, which is great news uh, for women. It means thousands of more women are joining the skilled trades. The bold action we're taking today will ensure that we're keeping women in the trades and attracting more of them to the skilled trades. So, Charmaine, over to you. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. And it's such a pleasure to join you all today. I'm so delighted to be here with my colleagues, Minister McNaughton, MPP Flack, Bailey and Anand, and all of the other delegates who are here as well. The proposed amendments to the Construction Projects Regulation uh, build on our Working for Workers legislation and show our government's support for Ontario workers. As Associate Minister of Women's Social and Economic Opportunities, 
My work focuses on empowering women to thrive at home, in the community, and in their careers. Increasing women's participation in the workforce is critical to helping more women achieve financial independence and prosperity, and contributes to the econo economy of the province as a whole. But for this to happen, we need to ensure that workplaces are safer and more equitable. This is especially true in fields that have been traditionally male-dominated, such as the skilled trades. Today, we are taking another important step to make workplaces more accessible and safer for women. Proper fitting personal protective equipment and clothing are crucial to ensuring women, that women are safe in their workplaces. And providing women's only washrooms on construction sites is another important improvement to workplace standards that will make these industries more welcoming. Safety equals productivity. And workplaces that are safer and more equitable help increase women's participation in the workforce and helps retain women in the workforce. That's why our government is taking action to remove the barriers and empower women to excel in sectors where they are underrepresented. Last week, I joined the Minister for Education in announcing that starting um, with students entering grade nine in 2024, all students will now be required to earn a grade nine or 10 technical education credit. This will empower Ontario students, boys and girls, with early exposure to technological education and skilled trades and prepare them with the skills and knowledge they need to succeed. But most importantly, it will also ensure that young girls will be given the opportunity to increase their representation in traditionally male-dominated fields. Now, I have daughters in the Ontario education system, and believe me when I tell you, this news makes me happy, not just as an elected representative, but as, but as a mother and a parent. So to all the women working in the skilled trades and on job sites today and the future, the future is yours, and our government will be here to support and advocate for your safety and inclusion every step of the way. Thank you so much, and I'm now going to pass it on to Brandon from Leuna. Thank you, Minister Williams. Historically, women have been underrepresented in the skilled trades, which has been a missed opportunity for the industry, employers, and women themselves. In light of the current labour shortage, it is imperative that we do not, not lose valuable workers simply due to inadequate facilities that, mail, that make workers feel uncomfortable or unsafe. One of our ongoing goals, both as a union as, and as an industry, is not only to attract but retain workers for, from underrepresented groups, including women. With great pay, benefits, and a pension, work in the skilled trades provides a stable, comfortable income for individuals and provides equal pay for equal work. But in order to achieve this, we need to foster a sense of belonging where women are treated equitably and are given the opportunity to advance in the construction industry without gender-based obstacles. Local 1059 is proud to engage with efforts from the provincial government and the construction industry to support women in the skilled trades. From the first days in our training centre all the way to the job site itself, workers deserve to work in a safe, clean and inclusive environment. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us here today for this important announcement, specifically Minister McNaughton, Parliamentary Assistant Anon, Minister Williams, MPP Flack, uh, Mayor Morgan, Mayor Burkhart Jessen, and Bob Bailey. Since he first took on a ministerial role, Minister McNaughton has been a true partner and champion of the skilled trades at Queen's Park, and I'd like to extend a sincere thanks on behalf of myself, our organization, to Monty, for his unwavering commitment and efforts to bolster the skilled trades in the province of Ontario. And now I'd like to invite the minister back up to the podium for Q&A. Thank you, uh, Brendan, again uh, to, to all those construction workers, uh, the men and women that are here today. Thank you for everything you're doing uh, 
Look forward to trying the trades with you uh, momentarily. And we need a career after politics, so we might be joining you. Yeah. With that, we'll uh, take questions or to the media here. We'll be uh, around afterwards as well if you want to do one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Okay, so we'll open it up to questions from the media. Uh, we ask that you come up to the microphone, announce where you're from, and it'll be one question and one follow-up. Good morning, Monty. How are you? Great. How are you, Jonathan? Um, you already mentioned the statistics about the 28% increase in the number of women who are entering the trades. I'm just curious if you have any other data that would perhaps um, give us a sense whether all the initiative that the ministry has advanced is actually turning the tides and attracting more people to the trades. Obviously, you mentioned the 1.5 million homes that need to be built over the next 10 decades. But uh, here in London, the number of, of people in the trades for youth, uh, according to the latest uh, census, has actually declined to, to levels not seen a decade ago. So just curious if there are any figures that you can release uh, for us. Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, I've been pretty clear for the last couple of years, governments of all different stripes have told every single young person that if you want to be successful in life, go to university. But that's simply not the truth. Uh, careers in the skilled trades are uh, well-paying, they're meaningful. Or you can build a family around. You can make six figures with a defined pension and benefit. Uh, that's why we want more people uh, in the skilled trades. Um, but we are making uh, progress. I mean, I talked about how there's 28% more female apprenticeship registrations uh, today than uh, a year ago. But overall, I I'm proud to say that apprenticeship registrations are up 23% uh, year over year. So we literally have tens of thousands of people um, in apprenticeship programs uh, across the province, including thousands here uh, in southwestern Ontario. Uh, but we're not done yet. There's obviously a whole lot more work that has to be done. Uh, we announced uh, a couple of uh, bold initiatives just last week. Uh, first off, uh, to allow uh, people in uh, grade 11 and grade 12 to leave high school and start apprenticeships uh, full time. And if they complete their apprenticeship, then they would uh, get their grade 12 equivalency or grade 12 uh, diploma. It's initiatives uh, like this that's going to encourage more young people to get into the skilled trades and really level the playing field so kids can uh, choose the career path that they want. Just as a follow up, in the, in the press release that was shared with us, uh, you guys mentioned the need of about 72,000 workers, I believe, over the next six years just in construction. Do you feel that, are you confident that we're going to be able to hit those targets and those numbers at the pace that we're at, or there's still need to be more attraction to, uh, to the sector? Yeah, look, uh, our mission is to fill labor shortages uh, in the skilled trades. I'm confident that we're going to get there, but it's going to take uh, a lot of work still from uh, labor partners, from employers, from uh, educators to tell parents and young people that these are, are great careers and they should be uh, first choice careers for more uh, young people. Uh, you know, I often talk about a, a friend of mine that's uh, in the skilled trades, worked down in Sarnia, building one of the largest private sector construction projects in the country, the Nova Chemical Project. For the first time in his career, he made over $250,000 last year. These, these are great careers. I mean, we all know welders and boilermakers and uh, carpenters that are making more than those with PhDs. And we want to continue to, pr to promote these careers as careers that you can build families around. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Rebecca, Blackburn Media. Um, just a couple questions about the announcement today. You mentioned that um, the dirtiness or filthiness of the washrooms is a major issue. Who will be responsible for maintaining the cleanliness of these new facilities? Well, um, thanks for that uh, question. Uh, look, uh, I've been clear that uh, these are men and women. Uh, they're heroes in Ontario. They're not livestock. We want to ensure that we're going to have the toughest standards in all of North America to ensure that these workers have clean and safe uh, bathrooms. Uh, in February, between February 1st and February 28th, our Ministry of Labour inspectors visited nearly 2,000 construction sites all across the province, many here uh, locally, and we found 244 violations. I mentioned it in my remarks, but 40% of them were for not having washrooms or toilets on site at all when they were required or having doors off. I mean, think about it. In Ontario today, you don't have to have a roof over a washroom. That's changing because we're going to ban uh, porta potties that aren't required or that don't have roofs on them uh, today. But the Ministry of Labour will be out uh, in full force, ensuring that these new um, requirements are, are being met. Uh, employers out there will have the responsibility. 
uh, to ensure that these uh, bathrooms are safe and clean for workers. But as is always the case, uh, employers, uh, labor, workers, let's work together to clean up things. It's going to benefit everybody. Absolutely. Just to follow up um, about the gear and uniforms for, for women, could you or somebody else um, tell us a little bit about the problems that women have with their gear and uniforms and what is going to happen to address those issues? Yeah, I, I will ask uh, Charmaine to uh, come up, but um, what our proposed legislation will do if passed will ensure that PPE properly fits all different uh, body types. The focus here is to ensure that safety harnesses and uh, safety vests uh, in particular fit women properly. Um, we're taking yet another step to ensure that uh, female workers are better protected uh, on the job site. You know, it, it's really fascinating to see some of the PPE that's coming to market. There's an amazing company out of Sudbury, uh, Cover Gals, and they're making um, uh, coveralls for, for women to more easily go to the washroom. They're making uh, maternity uh, gear for women in construction. So I think we're gonna see a lot of innovation on this front. This legislation is going to accelerate that innovation from a, a manufacturing uh, standpoint, but I'll turn it over to Charmaine because she's been listening to a lot of stories from, from workers. Thank you, Minister McNaughton. He hit the nail right on the head. That's exactly what we've been hearing from women. They are uh, speaking very openly. Uh, when I have roundtables with women who are on construction sites saying that they sometimes can't find the right coveralls, uh, boots that are the right fit because maybe there's only male, men's sizes available. Um, so it, this is, it's also going to ensure that women are safe. You don't want to be hoisted up on, on a harness and, and it's not fitting properly. So these are the important steps that we're seeing. And I can't speak uh, just high, so highly about the washroom. I can't speak enough highly about it because, you know, we've heard women say that it, it, there's sometimes no washrooms available for them or they have to walk to the other end of a construction site to use the washroom. And um, these are the things that are contributing to about 50% of women leaving the trades in four years. And it takes many, um, it takes about four years to become a full journey person. So if we have women um, having, working in conditions that are encouraging them, um, that are making them feel safe, um, they're going to stay. And we're going to see more women uh, as journey people and more women in management positions that are going to encourage more younger women to get into the field. So these, this is such an important an announcement today. And uh, I just uh, am very proud of our government's accomplishments on this. Thanks. Thank you. Great. We'll be around if there are any other uh, questions. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, again, to uh, the labor leaders that are here, thank you for, for your advocacy. Uh, to the workers, to the employers, thank you for being here today. This is a great announcement and, and really is going to improve the lives of those heroes on construction sites every day. Thank you.